Let's make a video player with Fuse. This is probably easier than you think, but we're gonna look at different things in this video, such as the video tag. We're also gonna look at conditionally changing the orientation of the device, as well as showing things like a progress bar, buttons, and more. So I'm gonna start off by removing the status bar because I'd like our video to not be cluttered up on the screen. So I'm gonna add iOS, dot status bar config is visible equal to false. We could do the same for Android if we said Android dot status bar config is visible also equal to false. So there we have it, the status bar should not be visible on both platforms. Now we need to get a video displaying on screen. So to do that, we need a video tag and we can either play the video from the local file system or a URL. So I'm gonna add a URL. And then I'm also going to give a name to our video. So UX name equal to video. And this allows us to target it in the future. And then if we add a button to this, and when the button is clicked, we can call the play trigger. We can pass in our target, which is that video. And we have that by saying UX name video. Let's add some text to that button saying play. And as you can see, the video button is actually underneath the video. So let's align that to the bottom. I'm gonna stick it in a panel for now. So if we click play. Let's add TypeScript to our Fuse application. So, we can... so our video starts playing when we actually click that play button, which is good. Now we might need a pause button. And to do this, I'm gonna instead use a grid instead of a panel. So instead of the panel, we can declare a grid. And in a similar sense, we can dock this to the bottom. And within the grid, we can do things like column count. So there's gonna be two columns and only one row. So we can say row count one. And now it's just as simple as taking our button, adding it there and adding a second button instead called pause. And as we're using a dock, let's add this to a dock panel. And we now have our play and pause buttons. The click trigger here should instead be pause. So now if we save the file and click play, let's add TypeScript to our Fuse application. And then click pause, our video stops. But if we click play again, you can see that it remains playing from the same location. So, so far, looks very good. We have a video player which we can play and of course we can pause. What happens though if we change our viewport and instead we take this and rotate it to the right? Not bad, but we have this white space which we don't need. So let's get rid of that by saying stretch mode uniform to fill. And if we click play now, our video plays as we expect and is stretched like we expect. But what happens if we put it back? Well, this happens. And now the video is stretched entirely, but in port rate, it doesn't look very good because we can't actually see what's happening in the video. So now we have to think about how we can change this when the device is in port rate mode. And Fuse seems to have an answer for everything. We can actually use the while window portrait and while the window is port rate, we can change that stretch mode. So we can say change the video dot stretch mode equal to something like uniform. So now if we take a look at our Fuse application in port rate mode, we can see the entire video. If we were to rotate the device, it changes appropriately. And if we change it back, we don't have that scaling problem, which is good. The next thing to think about is how might we determine how much progress there is left in the video? Well, Fuse once again allows us to use something called a progress animation. So we can add a progress animation. So this is going to trigger a change event. And what we need to do is make some sort of rectangle to display this change event. So we could have a rectangle and I'm gonna give that a fill of purple. We'll give it a width of 0% because we want to start it at 0%. A height of about 5, 10 or 20, so we don't want it too big. And we can choose to dock this somewhere, such as the bottom. 
We'll also need to give this a name so that we can change this value. So I'm going to call it progress. And we can say when the progress of the video changes, we can hook into the progress.width and give that a value of 100. This will mean that the progress bar is visible on screen and will continue to grow as we watch the video. Let's take a look at this. So press play and we see the progress bar continue. So there we have it. We have a video player with views. We could put the rectangle below the grid like so. And then if we click play, our progress bar appears above our two buttons. There's a variety of ways in which you can improve this, but this should be a very basic video player inside of your Fuse applications. If you found this useful, hit that subscribe button, stay updated with more Fuse content. And until next time, my name is Paul, and I'll see you very soon in the next video.